okay guys, this is not an enthusiastic session. This is not a wrapping session either. This is going to be the moment that you guys dim your lights right now and you guys know how I feel about my poems before I get started, okay? This is a very sentimental moment for me and very nostalgic, which brings back lots of tears and memories of how life began for Philicon, the degenerate cryptocurrency guy. And I'm going to read you guys a poem, okay? I'm going to read you guys a poem that I wrote about Ethereum that you guys can also buy on iTunes. And I will sign it by saying things like to John, and then I'll read it back to you if you want to purchase it. You can also get the ebook version as well that I sell for 5 million Bitcoin. Okay? So sit back and listen to this poem, dim the lights, and get ready to know a little bit about me and how things got started. Okay? A poem for Ethereum by Philicon the Degenerate. A poem once again, guys, by Philicon the Degenerate about Ethereum. <clears throat> Back in 2016, my friend Miriam told me about this new coin called Ethereum. She said it would go so high, put you into delirium. So back in March 2016, I bought as many as I could. Back then I felt like a lost boy, out in sea like driftwood, wondering what I was doing with my life. Where is my adulthood? I patiently waited until I could almost wait no more. Will this treasure trove finally wash ashore? Was it a wasted investment beat down by a centaur? Though a year later, Ethereum got up on its own two feet and there it stood, looking valor, joining the ranks of knighthood, a blessing in disguise through sainthood, made me giggle like a kid, brought me back to childhood and cashed in my Ethereum at 350 I did and BAM! I obtained my manhood. The end, guys. The end. Okay, guys, now that you guys have heard a little bit about me through a poem, because I sometimes think it's important to share your feelings, right? We have to share it through, through, your, through a poem sometimes. I was thinking of writing a haiku again, but but I still don't understand like how you write a haiku. These syllables, you know, they're, they're very complicated to me, okay? So guys, let's take a look at Ethereum. Woo! Let's take a look at Ethereum. It's bringing me back to some really good times right now. And I'm so excited to take a look at this. Okay, guys, let's do this. Okay, so this is when I bought my Ethereum. I just want to go back a little bit to let you guys know, okay? <laughs> I bought my, my Ethereum in March of 2016. It was, wasn't even listed on here yet, but it was like freaking $10 back then, guys. It was only $10 when I bought it back then. Like, holy cow. And then this is when I sold it, guys. I held on for so strong. And, you know, I was really thinking of selling it, right? I was thinking of selling it when it got to 100 I was thinking of selling it when it got to 200 But then I thought to myself, man, this is... I'm just going to hold on to it, okay? And just see where it goes. And of course, I use all my technical indicators, right? And I finally started to sell it. If you guys saw my RSI video, okay? If you guys saw my RSI video, I saw lots of signs of bearish divergence and on the weekly as well. I cashed it in at $350, guys. I only had 200 Ethereum. It wasn't much, guys. It was only a $2,000 investment, you know? It really was only $2,000 that I spent it was like basically a salary of mine, right? Like, a, you know, like two, three week salary of mine as an engineer. But it was enough to change my life, you know? It was enough to change my life where I got like sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 out of it. And um, that's when I said, you know what? Screw the corporate office. I'm not doing this anymore. I am going to invest my my tears, blood and sweat into learning how to trade like, like really well, you know? And that's what I did. And here I am now sitting in front of you guys for 16 hours a day in my own beautiful house getting to trade cryptocurrency and i'm loving the life so far i don't get out enough i don't really get out a lot you know i should probably go out more because i think i trade like 16 hours a day or i'm doing content and stuff like that anyways you guys are probably wondering what the heck is going on right now let's clear all of this out right now okay guys let's clear all of this out right now okay we are going to call this the beginning of time through Elliott Wave. 
this is going to be wave one right here that we see very clearly. Would you guys agree with me? Now the next step is to figure out what kind of correction are we getting in here. And there are multiple, multiple types of correction that we can assume. So let's go through all of them. And regardless of what type of analysis we do, we will actually come to the exact same conclusion that we have reached the bottom and something drastic is going to happen soon. Something is going to happen to the point where you guys have to make a decision where to put your money and you have to make it very soon because this is going to be in the next two or three weeks in my opinion. And you guys could be very profitable. So because this is bringing back a lot of nostalgia to earlier uh, to this year and to last year when I was mining it as well, I'm going to be very invested in it because of the target. So are you guys ready to take a look at some analysis? This right here is what we're going to call wave one. Okay, guys, right there. Now, here is a few different types of corrections that we could assume, right? And I'm not going to I'm not going to argue with anybody. You know, it's just it's here. I'm going to go through all of them. Here's a possibly an A. Here's a B. Here's a C right? D, oh sorry, here's an A, B, C, and D, an E correction, okay guys? That is one possible scenario right there. A, B, C, D, and E. And if you guys notice, like right around here, we're actually finding some major support, right? Right around here, right around there, we're finding some major, major support, right? It's intersecting a lot of different lines there. And throughout this point, right here, right here, even a small stall there, here, here as well. So it seems like the bottom is already in. Wouldn't you guys agree with me? Now, another type of analysis that we can do, which is my favorite, is just using more Elliott waves, okay? We're going to try to isolate some ABC corrective patterns, right? For example, this could be A right here. If we zoomed in, I'm sure we could actually see it, okay? I'm going to show you guys very close. Give me a second. Okay, here we go. I just have to get my tool there. It was bugged. A, right here. Here's B, right? And here is basically C. And I'm going to show you guys what this possible C is right here and why it fell very short, okay? So first of all, for a typical C correction, what we would automatically assume, guys, is this, okay? We would automatically assume that Fibonacci would do a one-to-one -one Fibonacci extension retracement. So for example, one two and three and i remember back then people were saying like oh wow it's actually going to go back to 114 dollars etc right but let me show you guys what this is right there so based on elliott wave here's a normal zigzag right abc where we get to the bottom there here is what we call a flat where a b and c basically creates a double bottom right and it says it lacks sufficient downward force to fold into to sorry to unfold into a full five waves and actually does a zigzag instead so it's basically a double bottom here is an expanded flat where it doesn't exactly do right it doesn't exactly do a double bottom or a one-to-one -one ratio and it's said it does an expanded flat where it falls slightly below it and this is the one that i personally believe where we are at right now okay we are much, because there's such a bullish market sentiment in Ethereum and in cryptocurrencies in general, it actually fell very, very far from it. And that's what I believe it is doing right now. And what we have to understand, first of all, is that every single coin spent a very long time consolidating. Wouldn't you guys agree? I mean, look at this. Okay, This is a massive time that we're spending consolidating right now. Every coin is like this, which you guys have to understand that every coin, we, we can call it a similarity index, okay? And a similarity index basically it gauges the market in terms of how similar and how close we are in terms of progression. And right now, Omizu Go, for example, you know, we had this wedge pattern that finally broke out. It's, you know, getting somewhere finally. And then we had IOTA, which is one of my favorite coins right now as well to trade. IOTA. I didn't even look at IOTA. I just shorted. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to short it because it looks like it's a wedge that's forming in there. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to short it. And if you guys take a look on IOTA right here as well, right? Like, um, this is a pretty nasty candle, guys. This is a really nasty candle on the daily chart. This is called a shooting star where there's a big wick that gets rejected from the top side, right? And the bulls tried to push it up. So I can expect that on the next day, it's going to really, really fall down to even like next two days to 47, 48. Anyways, so IOTA is doing the exact same thing, guys, where it's fallen to this wedge type pattern. If we look at Metaverse as well, another coin I'm invested in, okay? This coin as well is also doing a wedge type pattern that finally broke out of it, okay? It finally, finally broke out of it. 
right? If you guys look at Litecoin, they are probably the most ahead in the pack right now. Um, wrong one there. So this is what I call the similarity index, okay guys? And the similarity index can give us a gauge on the market in general. So do you guys see right here what happened to Litecoin? It sure broke out all right. It sure broke out. And I gave a trade suggestion that you guys should take a look at, even though you didn't get in the, you know, the $40, $50 range. I still made a trade of a suggestion, right? And I'll go over it for the people that are interested right now. Risk to reward, 4.52 chance to gain literally 100%, chance to lose 22% of your money, exit at $122, exit one, and exit two is $177, and this is a very high chance of success with a four to 6% chance, or sorry, four to six month um, time frame that you're waiting. So what we see Litecoin do is it squeezed into here, and then it finally resumed its overall bullish um, sentiment, right? And what we need to take a look at is now Ethereum, right? We have to also understand the nature of other coins so we can get a gauge of how the coin that we are analyzing is doing right now, okay? So what I see this as right here, just as an example, is I now see this as an XYZ, okay? And let me show you guys what I mean by that right here. I see this as a double Elliott wave uh, pattern. For example, I'll just put my X there so you guys can see it, right? And I'm just going to say that this is a very small ABC correction somewhere down to over here. Okay, guys? Super duper small where it barely made an ABC in there almost. So this is one way that you guys can see it as well, okay? This one here didn't even come close. This one made that flat version that I was talking about, ABC. So that's easily one way that you can view it as well, okay? So you can view it as A, B, C, D, and E or you can view it as A, B, C, and W, X, Y as well. Now, I'm not gonna bother counting all the Elliott waves for you guys, and I don't wanna bore you guys with that. I'm gonna actually do some trend line analysis for you guys instead, okay? So I'm just gonna delete some of this here, just as an example. We're gonna, we're gonna evaluate this from some trend lines. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna show you guys a clear example of what Bitcoin does, okay guys? What Bitcoin does every time we break a new high what you guys have to always make note of is that every time it breaks a new high, guys, see, we stole at the previous high here, say at 28, 2900, but as soon as we broke it, we got some major, major, major highs, guys, okay? And look at the next point right here, okay? Every time we break this point, we got a major one. We got a high one, right? Now, this was a major point as well where it was stalling. Now, what happened afterwards, guys? It skyrocketed, okay? It skyrocketed. And every time, guys, we break a new high, like right here, it skyrockets, okay? And what was formerly a resistance to support, it becomes a resistance or support again. So if you guys make note of Bitcoin right here, I used to analyze it a lot, that was actually a really good buy zone for a lot of people. Fairly wide range from 55 to 6,000, right? And that's where we're bouncing back up to it because the former resistance slash support is actually a new buy zone as a support region. And that's where we're bouncing off of it right now, okay? So I wanna make note of that very clearly. And you guys will see me correlate a lot of different charts, right? Because that's what us traders do. So what you guys need to notice right here is this is a pretty strong buy zone right here, okay? This is a really strong buy zone because we keep getting wicks poking through it and lots of activity and price action within this buy zone. And now what we have to make note of, guys, is that right here, this point right here, this one was $412, okay? $412 right here. That is the target right now. If we actually beat that high, which could be coming very soon, we're gonna reach some massive new targets. Now, what is going on right here, guys? Would you guys agree with me that that is now a massive resistance line that we see? And the thing about, about supports is we can also see them very clearly, right guys? And we've now exited outside of this zone right here, okay? This is the buy zone and the people that missed it, that is 100% okay. Do not FOMO whatsoever, okay guys? Do not ever have that fear of missing out just because you didn't get in that buy zone. Some people may not have known, but I want you guys to really understand that wherever there is a major, major resistance or support area and lots of activity, right? Right around here, here as well, stalls around there, here, here, they tend to be really good buy zones for you guys to take that risk to reward setup. And if you guys take a look at where this squeeze is right now, this is December 22nd, guys. The date right now is 
<laughs> December. You guys know what I'm talking about. November 22nd. Okay, guys? November 22nd. I was just testing you guys to make sure that you guys understand what I'm saying. Okay? So don't think for a moment. I don't know what the date is. It's just making sure that you guys are paying attention. All right? So this is November 22nd, to be clear, for the people that thought it was December 22nd. It's not. Okay? And the date right now is November 13th. So we're about nine days away for a massive potential breakout right now, guys. And just doing a basic trend line analysis, guys, such a basic analysis that I'm doing right now. We are seeing massive buy zone support right here. Okay? Every time you guys get to this support area, you see the volume start to spike around there, right? It's pretty nice. So what you guys always have to make note of is whenever we squeeze into this type of pattern, we usually end up continuing it's um it's um bullish momentum right that it has think of this as a really really big consolidation phase guys okay a big consolidation phase and i kid you not that the end of 2017 was the year of cryptocurrency consolidation and i'm pretty sure that a lot of people lost money okay guys a lot of people lost money because they just couldn't wait and they needed it to hurry up but I kid you not that 2018 will be the year of cryptocurrency and we are going to reach some fantastic highs just based on the previous charts that I've shown you right now already, okay? So guys, right now, we are looking, would you guys want to know what targets are? You guys are probably so excited to hear some targets, right? Okay, guys, how do we do targets? First of all, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of anticipation. Patience! <laughs> Bum! Did you guys get that joke? It's a Rocky Horror Picture Show joke, okay, guys? <laughs> get it? Anticipation? I'm going to create a little bit of anticipation for you guys, okay? And I'm going to show you guys how we do targets, okay? We are going to take the first point where it began, and then now we are going to go to the point of where it ended to the lowest possible point, okay? And this is a conservative approach. And I will show you guys one thing from my Elliott Wave rule book. So get ready. Luna, we're going to talk about some Elliott Wave rules right now, okay? Are you ready? <laughs> ah, whoa, you trying to bite me, little girl? You know that we eat you for dinner. Give me a howl now. Three, two, one. Say hi to everybody. Ow, ow! Ready? <laughs> whoa, whoa, she's trying to bite me, guys. Come on, Luna, give the viewers a howl. Ow, ow! <laughs> That's a pretty good one. Can you do a better one than that? Ow, ow! Give me way better than that, Luna. Just one more. Three, two, one. Ow, ow! Okay, guys, that's all that she's going to give you today. I'm sorry. You starting to talk to me right now? You want to say hi to them again? Ow, ow! Last one you're going to do, then we're going to turn it off. Ow, ow! Okay, that's all you guys are going to get from her. That's it. She says hi to you guys. She wants you guys to know that she also understands Elliott Wave really well, okay? So we're going to take a look at some rules right now. Let me show you. Okay, guys, here we go. Elliot discovered that in terms of price, wave three is often the longest and never the shortest. This is taken directly from an actual textbook for Elliot Wave. So what they're saying is that wave three is often the longest but never the shortest, which means that it is always longer than wave one, which also means that wave three can be longer than wave one, and sorry, wave five can be longer than wave three, and it can be shorter than wave three. So let's follow these rules again that I'm gonna say. Wave three is often longer than wave one, okay guys? And it's never the shortest. Now wave five can be longer than wave three and it can be shorter than wave three. If long wave five is longer than wave three, then we call that an extended fifth wave, which is a beautiful thing when we see it, guys, okay? So what we know is based on Elliott wave theories from an actual textbook. I didn't make this up. I'm just letting you guys know, okay? I didn't make it up. These are rules that, that pretty much every single chart always follows. And it's what I can attribute to my success as well because I follow these rules religiously as you guys might have seen in my R side videos and tutorials in general, okay? So guys, we're going to assume, I know there's been so much anticipation for me to scroll up right now, guys. I know there is. Because we assume that a wave one will or sorry wave three will be at least equal to wave one and much greater this is the target guys right here the target is right there 537 dollars guys i'm not joking i'm not joking i don't know about the time frame 
I don't know the time frame, but if I had to guess the time frame, right? Whoops. And I'm just going to take, um, you know, this line right here. I'm just going to clone it. And I'll use this exact same time, kind of time frame and date range, etc. If I had to use the exact same time frame just to extrapolate at the end of this wedge here, um, we could be looking at... Okay, a little bit more than that. We could be looking at... Wow, that's crazy, guys. Do you guys see what I'm seeing? So guys, based on a one-to-one -one extension, okay? And I'm gonna show you what a one-to-one -one extension means. It means you take this price range right here, okay? And then you're adding it to this price range right here, which makes a one-to-one -one measured move. And based on Elliott Wave rules, guys, we are literally targeting $541. That's right, guys, $541, okay? And we're gonna see how much percentage that is right there. That is a possible 75% gain of your investment, guys. So I will be pouring a ton of money into this trade, guys. I will be taking this trade so heavily, okay? And now let's just assume that it makes a measured move of 1.618, okay, guys? We could be going for a second target, guys. A second target. And this move right here, assuming that it did the same thing, right? Right there. This one, actually, I'm, I'm being a little bit too um, generous here. Let me just get my date range tool out. If this move right here took, say, 107 days, we'll also assume that this will take 107 days. Okay, guys? We'll move it to around right here. Whoops. We'll move it to right around here. So we're take, literally assuming that it could make the same measured move. So in March, guys, we could be looking there. Now, if we actually make another measured move, right, where we're taking the exact same angle to 1618 over here, okay? If this one right here was 300 or March 15, we'll say around there, March 9 rather, March 9, sorry. This one here using the exact same move, just cloning it and moving it over. If it did a 1618 extension right here, guys, we're basically looking at around end of March here, and we could be targeting $718 as well. And this is not me just hyping up a coin or shilling or anything, guys. This is me explaining to you guys that there's now a very demand, or sorry, there's a very balanced supply and demand that is being squeezed into this specific point right here, guys. This is a specific point, and what we call it is an apex, okay? And at the end of every apex, from what I have seen, guys, I have not seen it in my entire cryptocurrency career yet, and I've been doing this for about two years now, I have not seen a single good coin break out to the downside. So I would be silly not to take this trade, guys. We are going to take a look at some math here. 170 days is the time frame for the first target, okay? Just want to be very clear, and we're looking at about March 9. And now, guys, we're going to take our long tool right here. We're going to set our stop loss probably around $270. That's a good stop loss, okay? Stop loss of $270 because, as you guys noticed, I said before that right here was a pretty good buy zone, right? Every time it gets to this region, people end up buying to push it back up. And it doesn't really, it hasn't fallen down below that level in about three months. So naturally, you guys want to take a stop loss just in case, say $270, okay? And now you're going to target a one-to-one -one Fibonacci extension right here, okay? You target one-to-one -one Fibonacci extension, and you guys are shooting for literally 75% gain. I'm sorry to say this, but anybody who does not take this trade, you guys are going to be missing out on it a lot. Now, I am no financial advisor. Do not get me wrong at all. What I see here is a one-to-one -one target extension, right? And I see a six-to-one risk-to-reward. For those that don't know what risk to reward is, I'm going to explain to you guys very quickly. Risk to reward through a simple flip a coin, okay? Flip a coin, heads or tails. Every time you win, you get one win equals 600 bucks. One loss equals $100, okay guys? That's just flipping a simple coin with risk to reward of six to one, okay? Six to one. Now I'm going to give you guys a crazy scenario where you lose, out of 10 games, 10 games, you only win three. And, and sorry, yeah, you lose, you only, 
you you win three and lose seven. Okay, guys. So three games at six hundred each is equal to what, guys? Is equal to sixteen hundred dollars, right? Just in case you guys couldn't do that in your head, three times six hundred. I did it really quickly in my head because that's what we call us people. We call it Asian level mathematics. Okay, guys. It's just in my genes. I apologize if you guys couldn't multiply three by six hundred really quickly like me on the top of your head. So I just want to explain to you guys how I did some very complicated mathematics there on the top of my head. And seven games at seven games won. Seven games loss at one hundred each is equal to this is now another level of mathematics that I've just done. 7 times 100 is 700 dollars. I am sometimes I wonder I wonder how I got through engineering school guys cuz based on the math that I have shown you guys like I should have graduated within a year, you know? Like wow, that math was unbelievable. So now you take your profit minus your loss is equal to 1800 dollars minus 700 dollars that's equal to 1100. So that is what you guys will work out to over 10 games with a risk to reward ratio, okay guys? With a risk to reward ratio of 6 to 2. Heck, even if you guys lost 3 games, sorry, lost 7 games and you only won 3 at a risk to reward ratio, assuming the same type of percentage that you can win and also assuming that your position size is roughly the same, it will take you guys a long time to lose, okay? Even if you only won 2 games, guys. Even if you only won two games, this is a ridiculous risk to reward setup, right? This is a ridiculous risk to reward setup. So now we're taking 1400 minus 800, okay guys? Or sorry, that's 1200 minus 800, guys. That's still a $400 profit. Even if you guys lost eight games and you won two games, this is the most ridiculous risk to reward setup that I have seen in a long time. And me, as a trader, that is what I focus on for the long time. I'm a day trader, don't forget that, okay guys? I capitalize on gains throughout the day and I close my position, but I will also hold very long-term positions, okay guys? Like the IOTA one that you guys saw my review of or my TA of, where I suggested for people to buy between 35 and 40 cents. Where is it at now, guys? It's at 60 cents, okay guys? So I've been making a lot of really good long-term predictions, and I kid you guys not that I will rationalize all of this out for you guys to understand where you guys need, need to make the informed decision, right? I'm not going to give you guys financial advice, but what I will point out is that this is a ridiculous risk-to-reward setup using a one-to-one -one Fibonacci extension, and also assuming that wave three is often the longest and never the shortest. This is a really, really crazy setup, guys. So to put into perspective, guys, if you guys put in 10,000, okay, we'll say $1,000, okay? $1,000, by the end of March, you guys could have a chance to be up to, you know, $1,750, okay, guys? And I don't know about you guys, but I don't use any bank accounts. As much as I'm tempted by their amazing high money master interest savings account of 1% per year, it doesn't really interest me that much, even though the 1% per year is just so amazing, guys. Doesn't investing in cryptocurrency with a possible gain of 75% in three months just sound so much better than a 1% gain per year that barely beats inflation rates? Hmm. You guys know what I'm saying? So am I going to take this trade? Absolutely. I would be ridiculously unintelligent to not take this trade. Not to say that you guys are, but I'm saying from my perspective as a long-term investor and also because I'm very nostalgic about Ethereum. If you guys remember from that <laughs> from that poem that I wrote you guys earlier, that made me very, very upset. Okay, guys? Actually, it brought back a lot of memories and I'm now getting super excited and enthusiastic about this coin if you can't tell. And my dog, where's my dog? I meant, where's my dinner? She's not here right now. I'm still staying at my parents over the long weekend. And I'm having a lot of fun here because they feed me a lot over the long weekend. So anyways, guys. Um, yeah, I always look for my dog whenever I get enthusiastic. So this is an awesome setup, guys. This is the buy zone right here. Don't feel bad if you bought it at 292. Don't feel bad if you bought it at 316. The point is you're holding this long term and a few dollars and a few percentage swings here and there. It doesn't really matter, guys. So the stop loss is clearly defined here, guys. The stop loss, we're going to delete all of that. We're going to make sure we write it out, guys. 
stop we're gonna have risk to reward first of all is six to one okay guys and now our entry price is basically entry price is between say 292 and 310 or three even 15 right guys stop loss is 270 dollars okay guys time frame is anywhere between three to five months we'll say okay guys probability I'd probably say 60 to 80 percent guys just based on good news coming up right just based on lots of good news coming up I would probably say that actually we'll say 60 to 70 percent okay that is actually am I missing all the info so you've got your entry price you got your stop loss you got your time frame you got your risk to reward and you have your probability as well okay guys so based on everything that I've said 100 percent guys I'm gonna go into this trade for every um, ethereum that i invest i have a chance to lose 40 dollars for the ethereum right but i also have a chance to gain up to 231 dollars per ethereum that i invest and i need you guys to understand that this is a very conservative target as well okay it's conservative target right here i want to show you guys bitcoin cash for example okay um bitcoin cash all right guys let me show you guys bitcoin cash Okay, guys, we're going to take a look at Bitcoin Cash here. And for the people that have been following my Bitcoin Cash updates, it's been pretty scary how accurate it was. It didn't quite retrace to where I wanted to yet. Okay, guys, you guys give it some time. Yet is the key word, okay? So this is what I did to nail. I nailed it, guys. The the Literally, I nailed it at exactly $2,800. Like, how scary is that, that I literally nailed it? And I'm going to show you guys how I did it using extrapolation. So I take my fib from there, right? And then I took this point right here. And then I assume best case scenario of this 382 retracement, right? And I just rounded it up to the nearest number right there. That's how I did that. And if you guys haven't seen it, go check it out how scary accurate it is, okay? $2,800. This is the perfect case of how it can actually do a 618 ratio, okay? So I want to show you guys Ethereum as well now, since we are talking about Ethereum. But like I always mention, we look at other coins to find correlation, right? So we look at Ethereum, guys, on the daily chart still, right? This is just a simple one-to-one -one target right here. A simple one-to-one -one target. Right there, that's it, one-to-one. -one. We hit it as well on Bitcoin Cash, okay? But because it's a one-to-one -one target, and we assume that Wave 3 is never the shortest, right? Well, we think of a lot of coins that have easily, easily done a one-to-one -one extension and way more, guys. So the target is literally $540, which I'm going to write down for you guys right here to see. Okay, target one. Target one is equal to $540. Target two is equal to $788, guys. There you guys have it. That is my analysis. Five, six to one, risk to reward. You guys are welcome to pause this as well. You're welcome to screenshot that. You're welcome to buy me a Lamborghini or send me a 9 million, uh, 9 million Bitcoins as a tip. I take that as well, okay guys? If you guys are very successful and you become ga gazillionaires, if you guys are so rich, maybe you guys can even afford to, to, to rent out my dog for a day because I know you guys are all after my, I know you guys don't even watch my analysis, to, to learn something you guys are all here for probably my dog which i really don't like and that kind of hurts my feelings guys so that is it guys if you guys love this analysis like subscribe blah 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 i don't do this for the likes and subscribes i don't care about you guys i just care that you guys make a lot of money <laughs> and then if you guys really liked it you know upvote it on steam it as well and if you guys especially loved it my dog there luna she's got her own little cryptocurrency piggy bank you guys are welcome to donate to the address provided below as well other than that have yourselves a great day and may the profits be forever in your favor have a great day, guys take care